is speculation that the game may have symbolized the movement of the sun, the ball, through the underworld, the court, each night. Alternatively, the ball may have represented another heavenly body such as the moon and the court was the world. Surviving courts abound and are spread across Mesoamerica. The epiclassic city of Cantona has an incredible 24 courts with at least 18 being contemporary. El Tahin also has a remarkable number of courts, at least 11, and it may well have been a sacred center for the sport, much like Olympia for athletics in ancient Greece. The earliest known court is from the Olmec city of San Lorenzo whilst the largest surviving stone-playing court is at the Mayan Toltec city of Chichen Itza. With a length of 146 meters and a width of 36 meters, this court seems almost too large to be actually played in, especially with the ring set at the demanding height of 8 meters. The rules The exact rules of the game are not known for certain and in all probability there were variations across the various cultures and different periods. However, the main aim was to get a solid rubber, latex, ball through one of the rings. This was more difficult than it seems as players could not use their hands. One can imagine that good players became highly skilled at directing the ball using their padded elbows, knees, thighs and shoulders. Teams were composed of two or three players and were male only. There was also an alternative version, less widespread, where players used sticks to hit the ball. The ball could be a lethal weapon in itself, as measuring anywhere from 10 to 30 centimeters in diameter and weighing from 500 grams to 3. 5 kilograms, it could easily break bones. Remarkably, Seven rubber balls have been preserved in the bogs of El Monete near the Olmec city of San Lorenzo. These balls range from 8 to 25 centimeters in diameter and date from between 1600 and 1200 BCE. The players' players could be professionals or amateurs and there is evidence of betting on the outcome of important games. The game also had a strong association with warriors and war captives were often forced to play the game. Players were frequently depicted in Mesoamerican art, appearing in sculpture, ceramics and architectural decoration, the latter often decorating the courts themselves, and these depictions often show that the players wore protective gear such as belts and padding for the knees, hips, elbows and wrists. The players in these works of art also typically wear a padded helmet or a huge feathered headdress, perhaps the latter being for ceremonial purposes only. Zopotec relief stones at Dainsu also depict ball players wearing grilled helmets as well as knee guards and gauntlets. Winners of the game received trophies, many of which have been excavated and include Hochos and Palmas. Aacha was a representation of the human head, only ones might have actually been heads, with a handle attached and was used as a trophy for a winning player, a piece of ceremonial equipment or as a marker in the court itself. A palmer was also most likely a trophy or element of ceremonial costume worn by ball players. They are frequently represented in stone and can take the form of arms, hands, a player or a fan-tailed bird. Other trophies for game winners include stone yokes, typically U-shaped to be worn around the waist in imitation of the protective waist gear worn by players, and hand stones, often elaborately carved. All of these trophies are frequently found in graves and are reminders of the link between the sport and the underworld in Mesoamerican mythology. As games often had a religious significance the captain of the losing team, or even sometimes the entire team, was sacrificed to the gods. Such scenes are depicted in the decorative sculpture on the courts themselves, perhaps most famously on the South Ball Court at El Tahin and at Chichen Itza where one relief panel shows two teams of seven players with one player having been decapitated. Another ominous indicator of the macabre turn that this sporting event could take is the presence of Zompantli, the skull racks where severed heads from sacrifices were displayed, rendered in stone carvings near the ball courts. The classic Maya even invented a parallel game where captives, once defeated in the real game, were tied up and used as balls themselves and unceremoniously rolled down a flight of steps.